tonight on the bill. You can go now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ross, how did... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ross, come on. Come on, it's all right. We'll sort this out. Look, Ross, you can get through this. So you've got to pull yourself together and prove everybody wrong. Oh yeah, that's assuming everybody is wrong. Two tons of rubbish and a load of dog muck. Well, be fair, this is Sunhill's green belt. Jim! Jim! Over here! Yes, you're right. Get an ambulance quick. I'm not surprised the board didn't give you a loan. There are far more deserving cases, like officers who haven't squandered their money. Yes, sir. And I'm not interested in your messy personal life. Not until you bring that mess into work with you. Then I'll become very interested. Sir, I think Ros knows that some changes have got to be made, don't you, Ros? Yes, Sarge. I'm really sorry, sir. I, I know I've let you all down. Yes, you have let us down. Me, Sergeant Ackland, your colleagues and yourself. You worked sloppy and you failed your probationary exams. It doesn't reflect well on Sun Hill, does it? No, sir. You're going to have to start pulling your finger out. Yeah, I know. I, I'm really going to try. You have to do better than try. If you want to be a police officer, you're going to have to show a lot more discipline than you have so far. So. Gotcha. Well? Drugs overdose. Serious. Now, his shoes and his coat, if he had one, are missing, so the chances are he's being assaulted as well. Well, I found this. He's Gavin Bilson. He goes to Camley Tech. Sierra Oscar from 600. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Could I have a name check, please? I see one teenage male. Suspected heroin overdose. Bilson. Gavin. Date of birth, 10-01-85. Over. Stand by. Well, we could start by checking around the estate. Well, he's a student, so he's probably not from around here. A5 from Sierra Oscar. Read your name check. Gavin Bilson. No trace. Received. Out. Right. Let's go over to Canley Tech, find his address and notify his family. Hang on. There it is. Gavin Bilson, Gov. Another heroin overdose. We've still got to follow it up. Well, you and Danny have. Yeah, thanks, Gov. Well, I'm sorry to bother you. I mean, it is only a 16-year-old lad on the critical list. There's a drugs overdose every day on that estate, Gov. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to do our job, if that's not too much bother. Gov. She's up there. Carly Sinclair. Can we have a word? Depends. Oh, you lot. Would you mind? We need to ask you a few questions about a student of yours, Gavin Bilson. Questions? Yeah, he's been in a bit of trouble. So come on then, what sort of trouble do you think he's in? Would you take that away, please? Thank you. Drugs. Heroin, we think. Look, I'm Gavin's personal tutor. 
I know him. He's got more than his fair share of problems, but drugs aren't one of them. Well, he's in hospital and he's overdosed, so I'd say drugs are one of his problems, wouldn't you? Excuse me. Jan Redmond, please. She's so fine. Well, that's Jan Redmond. Nice. She's not your type. You reckon? Not unless you fancy a sex change, mate. Hello, Danny. I'm just gonna stand there gulping. I'll come over and introduce your friend. Hi, Jan. This is my colleague, DC Mickey Webb. What's this then? The wages of sin? Close. The wages of dancing. Good what? I'm a DJ and DJs get paid. Good ones get paid a lot and I'm a very good one. <laughs> you would be. A young lad OD'd this morning, student at Camley Tech. Mickey and I wondered if you might know anything about it. You know I don't deal anymore. Oh, come on, Camley Tech was on your old stomping ground, wasn't it? Allegedly. Who's taking over your old patch? Could be anyone. Look, I'm sorry, I'm just not part of that scene anymore. He's 16, Jan, he could die. Which is why I gave up dealing. Look, I'm sorry for him, whoever he is, but I can't help. Can I go now, boys? Listen, if you... hear anything, you'll be the first to know. You should come down one night when I'm playing. You'd enjoy me, Mickey. Yeah, I bet I would. An ex-dealer and a donut. Poor kid. Hello, I'm Joan Sullivan. I'm here with Gavin. Are you his mother? No. The other boy in there is my son, Jamie. He and Gavin are best friends. Gavin's father has been notified. His mother died about six months ago. Since then, he hasn't seen his father. Um, I don't think they've even spoken. Gavin's on his own, apart from Jamie. So you would know if he took drugs? Yes, I would know. And no, he doesn't. He came over last night. I would have seen him. I know this is hard, but can you remember what Gavin was wearing? He may have been assaulted. He had no coat or shoes on when we found him. His trainers, uh, horrible new things, grey with bright yellow laces and uh, a black and yellow leather jacket with an eagle on the back. I really should be with him. Sure. CID will need to speak to you later. Jamie. Oh, whatever. Can I come? Uh, of course, go on. These debts are yours. They just won't go away, you know. I know. First thing you've got to do is find somewhere to live, somewhere you can afford. Yes, Des, I know. What you want to do is move out, sell your scooter, get on top of things. Can we talk about something else, please? Roz, there's a mate of yours at the front desk. Ruth? I'll see you in a sec. Typical. Ruth. Thanks for coming. You had that board meeting today, didn't you? How did it... Oh, badly. Oh, not even that good. It's actually why I called you. You're not looking for a flatmate, are you? No, why? I was counting on getting that police loan. If I don't get some money soon, my flatmate's going to kick me out. It's a toss-up of what I lose first. My house and my job. I can't help you with either of those. I'll tell you what, though, we're going to have to do something about it, aren't we? Like what? Girls' night out. Come on, meet me after work. We'll get Hammond and put the world to rights. I can't. I'm stint. And I, I should be revising every night. I've got, I've got to reset my probation exams. Mate, what you've got to do is forget about it all for now. Trust me, I'm nearly a doctor. <laughs> Come on. Mally's wine bar. Come on. No excuses, all right? <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt your social arrangements, but you are supposed to be working. Des is waiting. Well, at least you scrub up well. You don't have to spend money on poncy makeup. 
you're not helping, you know. Well, at least I'm trying. Sometimes you don't seem capable of helping yourself. Thanks. What are those two up to? It's not quick enough, eh, love? Ow! You all right? Okay, I'll give you a hand. I can manage. Oh, well, it's only trying to help. I sit on the trust here. Our doctors are the best. Gavin will pull through. Jamie, did you know Gavin took drugs? He isn't a smackhead. It wasn't heroin that he took. The doctors just got their test results back. Gavin took dimorphine. He injected dimorphine? Yeah, it's a prescribed drug, a very unusual one for a lad like Gavin to get hold of, let, her, let alone take. Yes, I know. Jamie, you're Gavin's best mate, yeah? <coughs> well, did he ever mention dimorphine to you? Gavin would have known all about dimorphine. His mother died of cancer. He nursed her for over a year. And? Dimorphine was one of the drugs she took. It was about the only thing that helped to control the pain. So you reckon that's where he got it from? Maybe she had some left after she died. Come on, that was six months ago. That's a long time to hang on to something like dimorphine, don't you think? We're just trying to help. I'm going back to Gavin. I'm not. Just get it. Hiya. Hiya. Who's that? Oh, Stuart, we're together well, just about. Look, I'm really sorry, he just sort of invited himself. Oh, don't worry, it's fine. It's just meant to be a girl's night out, wasn't it? Mm, never mind. Stop me from moaning on. Is everything all right between you two? Oh, yeah, it's fine. You know, it gets just a bit possessive. You just caught us at a bad time, really. Mm, overbearing men. Been there. So, um, how are you anyway? OK, I feel a bit of a prat. I just need to... Just oh, I'm really sorry. Another time that we just been the two of us just me and you. Um, Stuart, this is Ros Clark. Ros, this is Stuart Brennan. The police friend. Just friend will do. Right, we were just leaving. Oh, well, I had to go home anyway. Face the wrath of my flatmate, do revision. You give me a call, yeah? Yeah. I'm really sorry about this. Gavin's off the critical list and we're going to talk to him ASAP. Now, we have to assume that controlled drugs are being sold on the streets. So, Cass and Jim, I'd like you to go back down to Canley Tech, find out what you can about Gavin, who his mates are, that kind of thing. Chances are it's just a case of a sad kid bungling a suicide, isn't it? Yeah, but it could be an assault. Now, Gavin had his pockets emptied and his shoes and his jacket were stolen. We're looking for a black and yellow leather jacket, grey trainers with a yellow lick and laces. Me and Ros nearly nicked a girl yesterday. She had trainers fitting that description. What well, is? Keep an eye at this time, then. <laughs> Suddenly, everyone's a comedian. Me and Ros will track her down, no problem. Uh, actually, Des, you're with Polly today. Great. I've no idea who does or doesn't take what drugs, let alone who's hanging around dealing. I really can't help you. Well, you seem very certain that Gavin didn't do drugs. It's so out of character. So does he hang around with anyone who is into drugs? He's a loner, apart from Jamie. They're working on a project together, a short film. What do you make of Jamie? He's not one of my students. Come on, Carly, help us out here. Someone could be pushing controlled drugs in this college, and we're not talking ease or a bit of hash. Jamie goes clubbing. He's probably experimented with drugs. Most kids do, apart from Gavin. Do you think Gavin was trying to impress Jamie? Maybe. 
Jamie's the leader. Gavin looks up to him. Well, does Gavin follow Jamie's lead? Yeah. How's Gavin been recently? Hard to tell. His moods can be very dark. They've got a lot worse since his mum died. What, well, dark enough for him to hurt himself? I don't know. I obviously don't know Gavin at all, do I? Danny? Apparently Jamie Sullivan might not be a total stranger to drugs. What, Gavin's mate? Yeah, and Gavin's tutor reckons that he might have been a bit depressed. Right. So suicide's a possibility then? Maybe, but I think I'd like to talk to the both of the lads, though. OK, fine. Thanks for keeping me informed. That is why you're here, isn't it? Well... A black and yellow leather jacket and a pair of trainers with yellow laces. That's what we're looking for. Look, just because that girl who hit you had a pair on like that, I mean, it doesn't mean she stole them from Gavin. Just because you're bored doesn't mean she didn't. You're only after her because she made you look like an idiot. Shouldn't you be doing your nails or something? Probably sold them by now anyway. You're not just a pretty face, are you? What now? Well, you like this. Because now... We... Going shop. Gavin's come round. We both want to get back to the hospital. Do you two have to go and hassle him? We have to find out where he got this darn morphine from. Mum's already told you. Do you think he kept it after his mother died? He must have done. Did you have any idea that he had the drugs, Jamie? No. Maybe Gavin didn't even know he had it. Maybe he only just found it. So why suddenly take it? Dimorphine, it, it's not something you inject by accident. Is there any reason why Gavin would want to try and kill himself? No way. His mother died in his arms. For God's sake, now his own father doesn't even want to know him. So you're saying that he could have been desperate enough to want to die? I don't know. Is there anyone that you know of who Gavin could have bought the dimorphine from? What are you saying? Could Jamie have a supplier? Was this the first time he'd used drugs? Jamie doesn't know anything about drugs. <laughs> An overdose isn't funny, Jamie. I know that. I know where to get drugs from. Everyone over the age of six does. Gavin probably did. He's not a junkie, all right? I'm going to the hospital. So, any thoughts? Well, Jamie's obviously upset. Well, I would be too if one of my mates tried to top himself. If that's what he did. You don't think he did? Oh, I've no idea. But I'd have to be more than depressed to want to kill myself. If Gavin was that bad, then he did a very good job of hiding it. I suppose we'd better ask the man himself, eh? Yeah. Cheers, Danny, for giving me a chance to prove myself. Again. Look, I'm only trying to... Help! Hey, steady on. You'll end up sounding like Des Tavner. Hey, hey, calm down, calm down. <laughs> La. La! A young girl. Tall, skinny, cropped hair, about 15. No? Des? Oh. When did those come in? You're not very bright, you, are you? I mean, we could close you down like that. I'll tell you what, Paul. Why don't you have a look at the serial number on that telly over there? And after you've done that, why don't you have a look at the stereo? Because that looks to me like it's fallen off the back of a lorry. Tracy Gallagher. Address. Ta. Here, here, don't do that. It's all right, Paul. The gentleman has very kindly decided to help us. Here, Amsiad. How much for that? You've got me. Just stop it. 
Stop. Will you please do something about it? Rose. Yeah, I'm coming. No way. I'm speaking to her. Later. Roz. Sorry. Easy, dear. She'll come out and do your other eye. Don't worry. I'll look after you. What do you want? Tracy Gallagher, does not You can't come in. You can't make me. And there's me thinking we were friends. Don't have to let you in. Yeah, but you could invite us in, Tracy. Just to be friendly, like. Come in. Gavin, you up for answering a couple more questions? Yeah. Well, we need to know where you got the dimorphine from. Joan said your mother used dimorphine before she died. My mum died. There's loads of stuff left. My house is like a pharmacy. And you kept some. So you knew how to use it. Seen her do it loads of times. But I knew what I was doing. So how come you nearly died? Is that what you wanted? To die? You don't understand what goes on in my head sometimes. Lonely, scared, depressed. Don't be too sure about what I do and don't understand. Sometimes I feel stuck. Sad. I don't know. Look, I just wanted to drift off for a while. Why won't you take it? It looks so peaceful. She looked peaceful. Why didn't you talk to Jamie? He thinks you're his best friend. He is. He's the only mate I've got. Jamie didn't have anything to do with this. He didn't know. No. no Jamie didn't know anything. Look, can you leave me alone now? Please. Just happened to find these, did you? And what about the jacket? An unwanted birthday present, I suppose. Here we go. One box which used to contain three ampoules of diamorphine and one nick jacket. Picture of innocence, aren't you? Sierra Oscar from 469 receiving over. Up to now, we've got assault, theft, possession of Class A drugs with intent to supply. Go ahead, Polly. Yeah, we found the stolen jacket, Sarge, and an empty box which used to contain diamorphine. The boys admitted the medication belonged to his mum. Where was his mum treated, Sarge? Uh, a hospice in South London. I think I'll do a check. Stand by. Des, Gavin's admitted to taking the drugs from his mum. But his mum died months ago, didn't she? I think so. We'll have a look at the label on this. Nice one. Don't think I've forgotten about you, Miss Gallagher. Gavin's admitted it was his mum's. There's no case here, Gav. It's just some messed up kid who wants a bit of attention, that's all. But it's a long time since his mum died. And a really long time for him to hold on to it. So he's barking. Des, we got some evidence on that drug case of yours, sir. Well, it's not a drugs case, Des. Suicide attempt, mate. Really? Well, the kid's depressed. The dimorphine he took was stuff he got off his mum six months ago. I think you might want to take a look at this. It's from St Hugh's Hospital. If you look at the date, it's from last week, which means it couldn't have been the lad's mother's. He's right. Looks like you've been conned by a kid, Danny. But don't worry, mate. It happens to the best of us. Right. Gavin Bilson. Whether it was a suicide attempt or not, someone is out there dealing in prescribed drugs. Thanks to Des and Polly, we know that the diamorphine was stolen last week from St Hughes. Good work. We were just doing our job, sir. It's Polly that found the drugs, wasn't it? Danny, diamorphine is hard to get, extremely addictive and very dangerous. And I want to know who's selling it. So we go over everything again. 
the pharmacies, the hospital, possible dealers, and we're going to need to do a full search of the waste ground where Gavin was found. Let's do it properly this time, shall we? Gavin's been lying about where he got the drugs. The kid that nicked the jacket has admitted the theft, but claims to know nothing about dimorphine. Ben, wait up. Listen, I'm really sorry. I've treated you like crap. Dinner after work? Make up for your sins? You sure you want to be seen with me? I'll give it a go. Ross, you ready for the off? I want to get going before death starts gloating again. Yeah. Should we go and try Gavin? We'll tell him we found his jacket, go with his story, you never know, he might slip up. Okay. Whoa! There you go, Roz. Don't say I don't get you anything. Des? Now I'll be able to sell that scooter to yours and save some <laughs> Didn't know how much that cost. But you could win the Tour de France on that. That'll look really good with your designer gear. <laughs> we found your trainers in your jacket and they're okay. Jamie should be pleased. Jamie? Yeah, he let me the jacket, it's his. Are you sure? Yeah, you can ask him. This isn't another lie, is it? Like the drugs being from your mum. They were. Who are you trying to protect? No one. Look, what I do is my business, no one else's. We found diamorphine in Jamie's jacket. We've seen the label on the packaging, Gavin. Dated last week. I didn't have a package. I only had one ample. Look, what I did was for myself, no one else. Just leave me alone. He's covering for someone. Jamie. Wait one minute. No, you won't. It's important. Ruth! Look, I'm fine, honestly. I'll catch you then. Ruth, what's up? Didn't you hear? She's fine. What's your problem? I don't have a problem yet. Why don't you like her seeing me? Just back off, for Ruth's sake. Sun Hill, isn't it? Why? You gonna report me? This is nothing to do with you. Thanks. Hi. Hiya. I thought we were going out for a meal. Mm, but it's still all I can afford. Pint and a packet of crisps. Cheers. Cheers. I did say I'd pay. I know this little tapper's place. I know, thanks, Ben, but I've got to start living within my means. Every spare penny I've got is going to pay Caitlin back in rental days. At least she said I can stay. I thought I was going to be out on the street. You know my floor's always available. Thanks. Life's not been much fun for you lately, has it? It's been my own fault. It's no excuse for the way I've treated you, though. True, you have been a complete cow. <laughs> Thanks. Gonna sit down? Yeah. How's the revision going? Oh, it's an absolute nightmare. It's right for you, you're good at exams. I struggle with joined up writing. You don't need to be a genius to be a good copper, but you do have to put some effort in. Roz, I didn't mean it like that. No. You're right. If I'm going to stay in the job, I've got to grow up a bit. Do you want to stay in the job? I want to know that I've tried. I don't want to get kicked out because I've been a la-la. A la-la? Sounds like a tavernerism. Can you talk about somebody else, please? There's his big brother act wearing a bit thin, then. He bullies me. Patronises me. <laughs> and the bike. And the worst thing is, is I can't do a damn thing about it. Because as soon as I say anything, he just throws everything that's happened back in my face. <sighs> I'm sure he means well, but... He's just doing my head in. What's the matter, Diz? Don't want to get your hands dirty. Stop it, you're going to trash the evidence. There wouldn't be no evidence that was left to CID. He's just a bit miffed because Roz has walked off with Danny again. She's been the hand that feeds. <laughs> They're fickle, these young'uns. It was bound to happen. Not to me, it doesn't. Roz wouldn't do that. Do what? Be disloyal. Really? She's not a kid, either. I say she was. Well, no, it's just that... It's just that what? Well, it's nothing. I, I know you mean well. What are you well. trying to say? Well, 
Maybe you've been treating her like she is a kid, that's all. What she said. Nothing, honest. Then butt out. Blit. Give us a biscuit there, mate. How's it going? Well, you know, Gov. Needles and haystacks and all that. There's weeks of footage from St Hugh's here. Can't we get someone in uniform to help us with this? Sorry, they're out searching a waste ground. I want to get a search warrant, Gov. Check that Jamie Sullivan's locker at sec. Yeah, OK. Hello. Oh, well. That's more like it. <laughs> Go on, sunshine. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey. <laughs> So that with you? That woman happens to be my friend. So? Turn it off, Mickey. How long is this going to take? It'll be a couple of seconds. Hurry up. No, don't touch those, please. Just doing our job. Danny. All right, so tell us again. When did you last see Gavin? We've been through all this. The day you found him, that morning, he came around before college. And that's when you gave him the drugs? You didn't... Mom. Yeah. That's when I gave them to Jamie, you don't have to tell them anything. Why did he come to you? I go clubbing. I know people. He was really depressed. I tried to talk him out of it, but... He started talking about his mum. Said I had to do this for him. It was his friend. But die morphine. Come on, you must have known how dangerous that could be. Gavin saw his mum take it a thousand times. Said he knew how. So where did you get it from? Just people who hang out in the club scene. I don't know their names. You must know some of their names. Will you stop bullying my son? If Gavin asked for the drugs and there's been no crime... Whether he asked for them or not, it's still supplying. This has gone far enough. I want you both to go. Mum, please. I know what I'm doing. Who's your dealer, Jamie? He doesn't know anything. Jan. That's all I know. Just Jan. Jan Redman. All this exercise, you can do your art in just watching it. I can still do a few press-ups, you know. Well, look, I can just imagine you in a pair of Lycra shorts. Afternoon, Jan. It's members only, Jim. Sorry. But I could sign her in if you like. Maybe later. We need a word about some diamorphine. Diamorph? Someone's giving you the runaround. I don't do or deal drugs anymore. Well, you wouldn't mind coming with us then, would you? Me a lift home after. Sending your foot soldiers to collect me now, eh, Danny boy? I'm insulted. This is serious. Which is why I'm telling you I've never ever come across diamorphine. Oh, come on, Jan, you were a top dealer. Nobody ever asked for something a bit special. Diamorphine's gold dust. It's way out of my league. I never had those kind of clients. What kind's that then, eh? The rich kind. The kind that aren't desperate. What is this? Class war for junkies. Oh, grow up. Diamorphine's almost impossible to get hold of. I don't know anyone round here who'd deal the stuff. Then tell us what you do know. I know that you're wasting your time and mine. Do you know Jamie Sullivan? Might ring a bell. One of your rich clients? Not one of mine. But he's got a bit of money, though. Nice little move here as well. How do you know him, Jan? He's a clubber. Quite good-looking as well, isn't you, Mickey? You ain't been very helpful, you know that. Then let me try a little harder. I don't deal. I've nothing to say about Jamie Sullivan. And in case it hadn't sunk in yet, 
If you want to find out who's selling diamorphine, you're going to have to start using your imagination. Trawling around the same old faces will not get you a result. Okay, boys. You want to go around the ditch? How's the bike? Yeah, it's um, it's great. Thanks, I appreciate it. Do you? Yeah, I just said that. I you said seems to me you've been doing a lot of talking lately. What is your problem? Bitching behind my back. Oh, give it a rest. Apparently, I've been patronising you. Oh well, now you come to mention it, yeah, you have. So I'll give you me help, and this is all the thanks again. Help? You've bullied me. You hassled me. Stuck your nose in from day one. You haven't helped me one little bit. You miserable. Little... I don't want your help. I don't want your sympathy, and I certainly don't want your stupid bite. I've stuck my neck out for you. I kept you moonlight in secret, and I should have grasped you up. Oh, well, come on then. What? Oh, we'll go and see my rope. If you want to grasp me up, let's do it. No? Well, then, back off. Thanks. No joy, Gov. Yeah, Jan can spin a good yarn when she needs to. Yeah, I think she's being straight with us, I'm sure. She knows Jamie, though. That's the same nurse, isn't it? What is this taking? Between three and four in the morning. That nurse is Ross's mate, isn't it? Looks like her, yeah. Roof, roof, sorry. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, he's putting something in his pocket. She don't look too pleased about it. Nicky, you won't go and talk to the doctor. Danny, you bring the nurse in for questioning. But it wasn't... It's going to be a damn sight easier getting her to talk than some smart aleck doctor. Lean on her. If we're going to get him, we're going to need witnesses. Besides, at the very least, she's been covering for him, which makes her an accomplice. And while we're at it, let's bring Jamie Sullivan in as well. Get this whole thing sorted out once and for all. Go. Are you sure you're okay with this arrest? What am I supposed to do? You know, bottle out because my mate's involved. Do you reckon we're stealing diamorphine? <laughs> no. But at the very least, I think she's covering up for this doctor mate of hers. <laughs> Stuart Bremner's more than a mate. She loves him. <laughs> God only knows why. She's coming out. Right. Let's get this over and done with. Thank you. Dr. Bremner? D.I. Yeah. Cullen, this is DC Webb. Would you mind helping us with our inquiries? Well, I'm a little busy. Could I ask you what these inquiries are? We won't take much of your time, Dr. Bremner. Perhaps we could find somewhere more private to talk. Ruth, we want to hear your side of the story. I don't know anything. Why did you steal the drugs? I didn't. What will you tell him? You know me. You're risking your whole career here, Ruth. Why? We've seen the CCTV footage. Have you in the store cupboard? Can you explain how diamorphine, stolen last week from your hospital, ended up in the possession of a 16-year-old boy who nearly OD'd from it? 16-year-old? Tell us what's been going on. Look, you're stressed out. You do things you never thought you'd do. You get yourself in a situation you just can't get out of. What kind of situations? I didn't know what to do. We saw Stuart Bremner take the diamorphine off you. You can't protect him anymore, Ruth. What? I've seen you with him. He's a bully. No, he's not. What was all that about in the bar the other night, then? I told you. He's possessive. He didn't want you talking to me, did he? You don't know anything about me and him. I know you're covering for him. You stop it. Some friend you are. <sighs> oh, this is such a bloody mess. It's not just your job you'll lose. Tell us about Stuart Bremner. <sighs> Look, you have to believe me. I don't know anything about a 16-year-old boy. I don't. I don't. Controlled drugs are controlled for very good reasons. It's impossible that any could go missing. But they have, Dr. Bremner. Stuart, please. And from what we've seen, you were there whilst Dunmorphine was being taken. What? CCTV footage clearly shows you in the hospital store cupboard. But I'm a doctor, that's not unusual, is it? You were with Ruth Mitchum. Looked like you were having a disagreement. 
Can you tell us what you're arguing about? Ruth's one of the nurses here. There are often differences of opinion. You and Ruth Mitchum have seen each other, haven't you? We try to keep it a secret at work. You've got quite a lot of secrets between a pair of you, haven't you? I'm trying to be helpful, but I'm afraid I'm not prepared to talk about my personal relationships. I should imagine being involved with stolen diamorphine would be a bit tricky for a man in your position, Doctor. I hope that's not an accusation. Dr Bremner, Ruth is at the station now. Anything that you could tell us would be much appreciated. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm not prepared to say anything else without my legal representative. Now, I have work to do. Gentlemen. Thanks for your time. If you change your mind, you know where we are. Lying. Probably. Smug little. Shouldn't just lifted him. And what evidence? A dodgy bit of CCTV footage. I'm arresting you on suspicion of being the doctor who handles some drugs. Mm. Nah, let him sweat. I hate geese as long. I reckon he can get away with anything. Yeah, well, unless Ruth or Jamie start talking, he probably will. It's about time you started telling us the truth, isn't it, Jamie? What's going on? You just want to talk to me again, that's all. I'm sorry, Mrs. Sullivan, but Jamie's in big trouble. It's possession with intent to supply Class A drugs. No, no way! Mum, leave it. It's time they heard the truth. No, Mum. What now? What do they want? <laughs> it's all right, Gavin. Come on. We have got no evidence. There's Ruth's signature on the ledger, and she's ordered all the patients' charts. So, there's absolutely nothing to incriminate him. I'll talk to her again. Oh, face it, Danny. She's gonna have to take the rap on her own. Mickey's right. Unless she admits that Bremner's behind it, because he's not gonna confess. Jim, Joan Sullivan's here. She wants to make a statement. Jamie didn't get the damn morphine from Jan Redman. He took it from me. From you? I have a drug habit. I've controlled it successfully over the years. It's quite easy to keep it a secret. People don't assume drugs when they look at me. You didn't, did you? Why die morphine? I started taking heroin years ago. From the doctors in those days. It's all very civil based. I had a reliable dealer, Jan Redman. She was very discreet until she decided upon a career change. And now? When Jan stopped dealing, one of her clients took over. They knew I used to buy off Jan, so they just sort of stepped in to fill the gap in the market. This time, it was damn morphine they were selling, not heroin. And Stuart Bremner? Dr. Bremner. No. God, no. But it is someone in the hospital. Ruth Mitchum, a nurse. I was working all hours. Started off with just a bit of speed. You got that off Jan Redman? Oh, yeah. <sighs> no, I couldn't sleep. I'd get some downers. The scene builds up. When Jan stopped dealing, it seemed easy to just steal drugs from the hospital. Some for me, and occasionally for people like Joan. Why didn't you just tell me? I'd have owned up sooner if I'd have thought Stuart was going to get in trouble. I wouldn't have let him take the blame. Yeah, but he knew. That's what the arguing and shouting was. He loves me. He was just trying to help me come off it. We're still going to have to arrest him. All he ever did was try and help. He didn't know I was selling the stuff as well. Yeah, but he knew you were taking it and he didn't come forward. I never wanted to drag him.
anybody else down with me? I'm not a bad person. I know. Oh, it's so easy, isn't it? What? <laughs> to let things get on top of you. <laughs> to stop coping. And then suddenly you realise you're not in control anymore. And that's the worst bit. <laughs> when you know for sure that you're on the roller coaster. And you can't get off. <laughs> Are you of yours? I think so. I hope so. So do I. For your sake. <laughs> hey, it's all right. Hey. Oh. Bye. If Jules hadn't died, I would have continued to be pig ignorant. Like me, you mean? Yeah, like you. Big brother having the hots for the sister's best friend. Was it that obvious? Home? Oh, come on, I'm all togged up. You promised me a good night out. Well, I'm sorry, but fun night out's over.